everyone, thanks for watching this video and welcome to my studio. In this episode, I'm going to give you a quick tour of my studio. So you will see where I keep my art supplies like paints, papers, and brushes. Also what I do with my watercolor paintings. I do have probably a couple of thousand of them. Yes, I do because I don't have the time to really sell the paintings. So I sell them anytime someone asks basically, but I don't advertise it and I do paint every day, sometimes every other day. And I've been doing this for the last six years. So I'm gonna start right here because this is the first door. I actually have double door to enter to my studio. I just closed the door behind me. And now this is like a little station a den uh, I use whenever I need to print like some documents or whenever I sell brushes and journals, I have to print labels. The desk is basically from Ikea. But this is nice because I can keep like all the envelopes for shipping and boxes inside those drawers. And so here is where I enter my studio. So I have like a little couch, I guess. I never use it really because I always have my paintings here, right? So I do have it also for my daughter because she loves to sit in my studio. I've been painting a lot of birds lately because I'm working on a cover for my line of brushes and also um, I've been doing a series about birds. But this is where I keep some of the paintings and as you can see there's a lot of them. They're also inside this poster bag. It's called a poster bag. I have lots of the paintings inside these boxes and uh, there is another area right here actually. So this is the big printer I have to print like images basically like images of my painting so they're professionally printed and this is the Canon Pixma Pro 100 series. Another bag where I have my paintings. I know it doesn't look pretty um, and you would wonder like are the paintings okay inside? Yes they are okay because um, the sizes of the paintings like vary and it's from like 5 by 7 cards to 16 by 20 and they're aligned really nicely in there but it helps to protect them. This is my cutting board mat. This is the mat I use uh, whenever I cut watercolor papers. These are towels, just regular rag towels. I have these for painting because when you see in the second like my table and it's a glass top table, you'll realize that, oh, okay, this is what she does. I use regular bath towels to wipe my brushes on. It's just paper towels never worked for me. So this is the area where I keep them. And then again, this is like the cutting board mat. It's pretty big, it's pretty big. And it's pretty much 22 by 30 or something like that. If you're interested in this poster bag, I bought this one on Amazon. It's called a poster bag. It's nice uh, because it's plastic and it just protects my paintings. I have a couple of them over here. It's hard to see it because I have all these papers too. Sometimes I also keep my watercolor papers inside of these uh, poster bags. And so where do I keep my watercolor papers? Pretty much everywhere, everywhere because I want them to be like handy. So I have some under my desk, which I will show you in a second. A lot of them are next to the painting desk, which is kind of behind me there. And then I have them stashed like here and inside the cabinet. So let's walk through it. So this is my desk where I edit videos pretty much. I add voiceovers uh, and I respond to messages, comments, and I like to stay connected with everyone who takes my classes, but I also respond to comments on YouTube and Instagram, which is really, really important to me. So these are my favorite watercolor papers, which is Leonardo by Hannah Mule, and then the collection uh, by Hannah Mule as well. So I have them here because this is where I sketch. This is where I do all my sketching. And then I do have some on the other side as well. I love this table, by the way, it's from Ikea. If you've been following me for quite some time, then you realize that this is a completely different studio. So I moved to Orange County. I used to live in Santa Monica, California, and we moved to Orange County, to South Orange County about uh, two years ago, almost two years ago now. And so this is actually a third place since I started my YouTube channel. But in between, there was another setup. So you might have seen that too. 
This is my ultimate studio. This is my dream studio. I have so much light here and I love it. What are the things that inspire me like the most? Well, first of all is being comfortable in my studio. And another thing is seeing my paintings everywhere. Coming back here. So I have a microphone here to uh, add voiceovers. This is just my computer. This is another painting I'll be working on. So this is a reference. And then I have a color wheel. Okay, if you do not have a color wheel next to you and you are a painter, you need to have a color wheel in front of you so you can work with the colors correctly. So complementary colors. Here are some of the paintings of birds that I've been working on because um, I just finished working and editing the bird series and all these paintings on my wall and swatches for different brands of watercolors. This is where I keep a lot of my watercolors. They are still inside the boxes. This is like my backup basically because I have a whole bunch of them next to my working table and I'll show you that in a second. I have more inside here. So as you see, I have plenty of full my watercolors because that's the main brand I work with. Uh, what was on top of it is just uh, Princeton's brushes. They use my artwork for their line, uh, Elite line. I'm really proud of it. And then I have another box. This is where I keep Schmincke watercolors, Drop series, which is like liquid watercolors, Kale, which is like the charcoal, liquid charcoal, White Knights watercolors, and Daniel Smith watercolors. Underneath, uh, there's another box. There's Rembrandt watercolors, more Holbein watercolors. Top one is Quar. And then I have uh, all gouache by Holbein. So I have lots of colors. Colored pencils by Holbein. I haven't used them much, but I'm planning to. Lots and lots of different brushes. These boxes, by the way, you can buy them uh, on Amazon. I love these. They're very, very handy. And I have uh, more brushes here. Brushes in this box as well. You can see there's way more brushes here. This is where I keep like the old tubes. I can't squeeze any more paint out of these pencils, uh, some markers, a nib pen, a palette knife I use to remove the sheets from a watercolor block. This is for the colored pencils, also by Holbein Pencil Blender. I have masking fluid here. Above this section, I have uh, watercolor paintings. There's more here, a ton of them. There's some seashells that I like to play with and paint as well. Swatches, more painting, more brushes, Calera watercolors, more watercolor papers, blocks, journals, uh, more over here as well. This is like a big section here because I have sheets. These are 22 by 30. More watercolor papers here. So this is the Leonardo by Hannah Mule. I have more watercolors inside, some Windsor Newton gouache set by Holbein, varnishes. Uh, my favorite varnish is actually this one. Sex True Flow watercolor varnish. It dries glossy. I love it and I highly recommend it. This one I do not recommend. I think it's a waste of money. It's Schminke. A fixator for watercolors. It does nothing because I sprayed my watercolor painting with it and after it dried I was still able to lift the colors, play with the painting. I have no idea what is this for. Sponges here, gloss gel. You can actually use this to glue your watercolor painting to a board, for example. Dorlin's Wax Medium, which is also a great alternative to varnish your watercolor painting. Daniel Smith Watercolor Ground, watercolor pencils as well, the cello bags. Uh, mostly to package my watercolor journals. Some of the brushes are here. So these are the golden uh, one and this is a round eight brush. So if you ever buy a brush from me, this is where they are. And then I'm actually awaiting way more brushes to come in the mail and it's going to be golden two series. So I'm really, really excited. And I do have a few journals, watercolor journals left if you're interested. These watercolor journals are made with Hannah Mule, the collection watercolor which is pretty much the best, at least in my opinion. True Flow watercolor varnish acrylics. So here is liquid acrylics by Holbein. I actually almost forgot what's inside, but it's kind of like electronics, cables, wires, laces, inks, and frames, and more journals. Actually, I have more journals. I didn't even know that. And let's move on to my working station number two. More paintings here. So these are like 
the newer paintings-ish. Uh, I like to have some paintings here, more paintings here, then I have some jars, aluminum palette. These are unfinished paintings. Something went off, I just wasn't fully committed to these paintings. And there's my table. This is a glass top table. You can buy this actually also on Amazon or at dickblick.com. This is a plastic palette by Holbein. Another one over there and another cart. So more brushes, more paints inside this box, more papers. This is the area where I actually don't keep the actual watercolor papers in. It's just kind of like papers to do swatches, test colors and so on. And I don't really use these brushes as much. My main brushes are actually right here on my table. And this is another area where I keep my colors, watercolors, washi tape, some jars and masking fluid for watercolors. I have lots of light here. And here's another view of my studio. So there is my painting desk. And then there's my drawing desk, editing desk, all this big unit with all the art supplies. And then this is kind of my view when I sit in this chair. So when I edit videos, add voiceovers or sketch. It's amazing because this room actually gets the most sun. So I'm really, really, really lucky. And that's about it guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. And please let me know if you have any questions. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet.